Adjusting the secondaries isn't that difficult, but knowing when and how to adjust them sometimes is. So I'll show you how to do it and what things you need to consider when you're making the adjustment. So let's get started. Now you've probably heard the term Edelbrock AVS used before when describing these carburetors. AVS stands for air valve secondaries, and all of that is is a little door that operates above the mechanical secondaries to help meter the air down through the venturi. And that's key, so we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. But let's talk about the door very quickly. So it's designed to open against a little bit of spring pressure, and that's what you can adjust with these to get the right amount of pressure going through those venturis. So you're adjusting the tip in of that air valve to flow over the secondaries. And again, that's big because these Edelbrock carburetors don't have like a secondary squirter like a Holly does. Um, they solely rely on getting fuel metered through that venturi. And how you do that is with the amount of airspeed going through there. And that little trap door on top with the spring is there to help you adjust how much pressure is going to go into those venturi. Now these are very simple. There is a T15 Torx that's a little lock nut and then a slotted screwdriver slot that helps you adjust how much spring pressure is on that door. And you can adjust it so it's a little bit lighter or a little bit stiffer depending on the situation that you're in. But when do you adjust these? When do you add more, take more away. And that's where folks get really confused, I think, because a lot of times when you have that hesitation that's in, not off off idle, but more of when you're cruising down the road, 30, 40, maybe 45 miles an hour, something like that, and you roll hard into the throttle and you get a little bit of a hesitation, well, there's this is one of the ways you can cure that. And I almost start here when when doing that is you can work with the with the the secondary uh, metering and try to add a little bit uh, bigger jet back there. That's one way of curing it. But this is a really easy way to see if you're on track and if you are heading in the right direction and if you can start to take away some of that hesitation by adding or taking away fuel with this air door, it really helps you start to dial down the adjustment. So it's not really a first step or a fourth step in the tuning process, but it is certainly one within it. And the nice thing about it is you can keep coming back to it. You don't have to set it once and go, okay, this is perfect. Because if you go back in and change jet sizes in the rear, you may need to readjust how much fuel is going to flow through those venturi. And the way you do that is by working on this air valve secondary. Now what's happening when you get that hesitation? At part throttle, low mile per hour, then rolling hard into full wide open throttle, typically it's a lean air fuel situation. So you're not getting enough fuel for the amount of air that is going through there. Holly's using an accelerator pump to add more fuel. It's pretty simple. Edelbrock doesn't have a secondary accelerator pump, so we use a combination of things to fine-tune that lean AFR out and to draw more air through the booster at the time it's needed to pull more fuel out of the metering system. But here's the catch with all that. Almost always when people I've seen people try to adjust this, they get that hesitation and go, okay, well, I need to snap the throttle uh, or this air valve open quicker. And that's typically not the way to do it. The correct way to do it is to slow it down. And I know that sounds different, difficult and different because you're thinking, well, I need to add more fuel, so I need to snap that door open quicker. No, what you're trying to do is you're trying to roll that air pressure that's in stream going down through the top of the carburetor to hit the booster correctly so it'll create enough velocity to initiate it and start pulling the fuel out of it once you do that the secondaries are completely open on that uh, on the carburetor it will then start pulling fuel out of there a little bit quicker but slowing it the door down is typically the way how i've gotten rid of almost every instance of that hesitation. Now, again, you can change the, the metering jets in the back, and that's also another way of doing it because it helps draw more fuel out of the fuel bowl and into the 
venturi and then down into the carburetor but size and how much fuel is going in there is a little bit different of the timing and that's what you're trying to do with this air valve is trying to get the timing right so you're getting the fuel that as you needed it into the engine so essentially what you're doing is you are adjusting the tension on the spring to allow that door to roll in when you need it a little bit more tension on it means it's going to require a little bit more air pressure going past it to open up that door and to hit the booster correctly. So that means you're going to slow it down. A little less tension on the spring, meaning the door opens a little bit easier, means it it's going to open a little bit quicker. Now, like I said, when you do this process, when you have that hesitation, always add more tension to it to slow the door down. And if it makes it a little bit better, then great. Then you know you need to keep adding a little bit more tension. Now we'll talk about exactly how to do that here in just a quick second. But this is a good way to start the process because if you add a little tension and it gets better, great. Then you know you're on the right path. Then you keep adding a little bit of tension until that hesitation is gone or mostly gone. And then you can continue to tune and hit other parts of the carburetor that, that you can add more fuel to. If you add more tension and it gets worse, then you know you need to go the other direction, meaning you need to add a little less tension to it. And then also, too, at that point, it's a good idea to take a look at the, the secondary jets. Because if your jet size is too small, well, this really doesn't matter. You're not going to get meter enough fuel through that booster to properly kill that lean air uh, AFR that you're getting at that hesitation point. So it's a bit of a balancing act. The good thing is, is it's on top of the carburetor. It's very quick. It's very easy. Doesn't require you to make a lot of other, you know, extravagant changes, pulling the top rate of the carburetor off. Very, very simple. And this is where I usually start when I'm trying to fix that hesitation on, like I said, when you're Part throttle, you know, under probably 2,000 RPM. So, you know, depending on the transmission that you're running uh, and the gear ratio that you have in the back, um, you know, that could be a fairly low mile per hour. But again, you'll know the hesitation when it when it's there because, well, it's it's pretty common to get that that hesitation um, off idle or off that low RPM. So now let's talk about how to properly adjust the tension on that spring. Little T15 Torx is a lockdown to lock that little screw down, which again is the, the one that you turn to add tension to the, to the spring, to add tension to that door. Now, just like anything else in the tuning process, making small changes is the best way to go because if you make a small change and it gets better, then you know you're on the right path. You make a small change and it gets worse, then you know you got to go back the other direction. So tighten up the tension on that spring. You know, typically it's about well, an eighth of a turn, you know, somewhere in there. It doesn't require a, a full half turn or a full turn on the, the screw. That's definitely way too much. It's small, minute little little turns in there. Make the little bit of an eighth of a turn, lock the torques down, fire the engine up and go drive it again and, and see if you've gotten any better. If it's gotten better, then you know you need to keep adding tension to it. And once you stop getting better then you can continue to work on and, and start looking at the secondary jetting but that's the proper way to do it you're just trying to get the air going through those boosters at the right time and most of the time when someone has that hesitation and they cannot get these the air the avs or the air valve secondary to work correctly it's because they've taken too much tension out of it always start with more tension first now, the nice thing about the Edelbrock carburetor is the primary fueling system through the boosters, the rods and the jets are up there, work in conjunction with the secondaries. And it's kind of a nice deal because as you are working to tune through the process, and let's say you get to that point where you've adjusted, you've taken out all the hesitation you can, then perhaps you need to go look at the primary side and look at the little step-up spring. Now I did a video on the step-up springs and how to use the tuning chart and how to properly select the, the right spring and when you can change them and try to put a little bit less tension on it. And certainly here is the, the right time. If you have tuned and tried to get rid of that hesitation and you cannot get it completely gone with the air valve, then 
start with the primary side of the carburetor and look at the step up springs because that will push more fuel from the primary side by allowing the piston to come up a little bit quicker because remember those are based on engine vacuum and as the vacuum drops it releases those springs and it meters more fuel because the rod comes out of the jet and allows a a more bigger shot of fuel to go through the jet. So it's all about trying to get these systems to kind of work together. And it's a little bit of a back and forth. But again, once you've made... Once you've made that uh, that primary change, if you change the step up spring, then you can go back and continue to test. And did the did the hesitation go away? Is it still there a little bit? And then you can always go back and readjust the air valve secondary door and see if you can continue to make it get better or worse by adding a little more tension or taking a little bit more tension away off the spring. So it's a really, really nice, cool calibration. Works very easy. Um, one of the problems is the older performer series carburetor does not have that ABS door on there. You have to, uh, use the thunder series carburetor, which I'm not sure is still available or going to still be available. The new carburetor for metal block, the AVS two has that secondary door on there and allows you to make those changes, um, on that carburetor. So if you've got the older, um, the 1406 is the popular one. It's the 600 CFM electric choke. Um, millions of those doggone things have been made. It does not have that secondary door on there. So we're strictly talking about the AVS or Thunder Series carburetors that have that door on there. So I hope that answered some of your questions about how to make that adjustment and when you try to get less or more air going through the booster. Uh, it's a very, very nice little system, but again, it's one that's very misunderstood. You know, it's pretty easy to understand that the Torx is the locking piece and the little slotted screw there, you know, adds or takes away tension on the spring, but for whatever reason, it's just, people have it flipped on how to do it. Always start with more tension and then, you know, like, like I said, take it away if you need to, but it's a great little system. It works very well. And when you start to put all the pieces together, you know, with, with the right step up springs, with the right metering, uh, rods and jets in the primary and the right jet in the secondary, and you get the door, uh, you know, operating correctly, the right fuel pressure going to the carburetor. Very, very nice, um, running piece. Uh, the AVS two with the annular boosters is another really good way to get that that throttle response that you're looking at it's one of the things that Edelbrock is famous for in this carburetor is holding a really good calibration for a long time because well it doesn't require a lot of adjustments depending on you know elevation or temperature change or barometric pressure change it kind of works its way through there because you've got all these little adjustments that you can make evolving the air Whereas on the Holly, the Holly cures a lot of the problems by d- dumping more fuel. Works great, but it doesn't give you a way to really tune. Um, they cure a lot of evils by adding more fuel. And that's not a bad thing, especially when you're talking about a racing application. And that's why Hollies will always dominate there, or that style of carburetor will always dominate, is because when you can throw a ton of fuel at it at the right time, then you're going to make a ton of power very quickly. Edelbrock's more of a finesse carburetor. It's more of a street carburetor. That's why they are very well known for what they what they do. So anyway, I hope that answered all your questions on this. If it didn't, please don't hesitate. Leave them down below. I'll be happy to ha- help you with your specific application. Hey, if you got something out of the video, leave me a thumbs up. I always do appreciate that. And uh, drop a comment down below. Tell me you, you love the video or you hated it, either one. Uh, So anyway, uh, that'll cover it for this one. uh, And I guess we'll see you guys on the next video.